On this video, let's think about how the Federal Reserve influences the money supply. To understand the tools that the Federal Reserve has to influence the money supply, let's think about our equation for the money supply. And that was equal to currency plus deposits. And deposits are simply the monetary base times the money multiplier. So if the Fed would like to change any of those things, one, it would have to change the amount of deposits or alternatively, the bank reserves through the monetary base, or it can influence the money creation process through the money multiplier. Now the Fed could, uh, as it did in fact in the past, target the money supply but instead, more recently, the approach has been to alter or change the money supply indirectly through interest rates. So by changing interest rates, they're able to change money supply at the same time. Now, a key to remember this process is that in order for the Fed to decrease interest rates, it has to increase the money supply. Now, changes in interest rates influence bank reserves and the lending process, changing the multiplier as well. So to think about this process, let's work through an example of one kind of tool that the Fed has in their tool belt to change the money supply through interest rates. The tool we're going to talk about is open market operations, and that is the purchase and sale of U.S. government bonds by the Fed. They do open market operations in the federal funds market. And the federal funds rate is the interest rate at which banks make overnight loans to one another. In that market, the lender has excess reserves that be, would like to lend and borrowers need reserves to meet the requirements. The, FUD, the Federal Reserve targets this rate because it's an incredibly powerful interest rate and uh, is correlated with important interest rates around the United States. As you can see here, when we plot the path of the federal funds rate against the path of other important interest rates across the economy, you can see that they are moving together or they are correlated. In this case, we have three different interest rates aside for the Fed funds rate. The prime rate is the rate that banks charge on loans to their best customers. Uh, the three-month treasury bill rates are highly correlated with the Fed funds rate also. And the mortgage rate is also there to show that it is correlated with the fence fund rate. It is, of course, less correlated with, uh, than the other two, but that is to be expected. The Fed funds are overnight loans between banks, while mortgage rates are 30-year loans to consumers. But if you think about what the Fed is doing, is they're moving one interest rate that move the rest of the interest rates along the economy. So let's think about the effective monetary policy in the federal funds market. And the Y axis, you have the quantity of funds traded, while on the X axis, you have the federal funds rate. And this demand and supply diagram the demand for federal funds comes from banks that find themselves with insufficient reserves, perhaps because they made too many loans or had higher than expected withdrawals. The supply of federal funds come from banks that find themselves with insufficient reserves, perhaps because they made too many loans or had higher than expected withdrawals. The supply for federal funds come from banks that find themselves with more reserves than they want perhaps because they had lower than expected withdrawals or because few customers took out loans. Now, as any other demand and supply diagram, the equilibrium federal funds rate adjusts to balance the supply and demand for federal funds. Now, the Federal Reserve can use open market operations to keep the Fed funds rate on target by purchasing or selling government bonds. Whenever the rate starts to fall below the target, the Fed sells government bonds in the open market in order to pull reserves out of the banking system, which raises the interest rate as shown in this diagram. The opposite, of course, is true. If the rate rises above the Fed's target, the Fed buys government bonds in the open market, injecting reserves into the banking system and pushing the rate down. For the Fed, open market operations are quick, 
easy and effective, so the Fed can keep the Fed funds rate very close to the target. To remember that process, let's uh, graph out the flows of bonds and cash that the Federal Reserve is conducting during open market operations. So let me draw the Fed here for a second. And banks. So when the Federal Reserve set, uh, conducts a sale of government bonds, they're sending bonds to the purchasers, which are banks. And in return, banks exchange those bonds for cash. So in a sale of government bonds, the bonds are going out to the public. These are uh, financial instruments that are not used as money. And money is leaving the financial system and going back into the vaults of the Fed. On the other hand, Let's think about the purchase of government bonds. In that case, what the Federal Reserve is doing is they're purchasing bonds from financial institutions. And they're saying cash into the financial system. So when we think about the sale of government bonds, the sale of government bonds is decreasing the money supply. And the purchase of government bonds increases the money supply. Well, throughout this conversation, there's something that we need to highlight. And that is that even though um, the Fed can keep the target Fed funds rate on point, the Fed does not control the amount of money that households choose to hold as deposits in banks or the amount that bankers choose to lend. So in emergencies, when households and banks start stashing cash, um, it can shut down the lending process and collapse the multiplier. And for that reason, the Federal Reserve has a lot more tools um, than open market operations. In fact, in the great uh, financial crisis of 2008, the Fed created an additional amount of lending programs to put cash into the economy directly through in financial and non-financial institutions. And now, in 2020, the Fed has reopened and expanded these lending programs to historic proportions. So, in order for you to delve deep into how the Fed conducts policy, I'd like you to think about, through this active learning exercise. What I want you to do is research the Fed's emergency actions in 2020 and follow this uh, link below. Now, please review the information in the report. I know it's a bit lengthy, but it's worth it. And I want you to go to Top Hat and summarize two of those bullet points. And um, make it short, please. Uh, we'll be reading all of those.